remove the top half of the fillet from the fish and we remove the eggs. Now we're going to remove the bottom half. You come in again, you apply pressure down with your left hand. We're going to stick the knife blade in using the curved part and we very slowly going to move it right on toward the tail. And I say slowly because we don't want to apply too much pressure and cut through those bones. If we come real fast and hard, we may do that. And once we get to that point, we just slowly move along. And you'll, I'm going to stop talking here just a second, and I'm going to show you can hear the sound of these, these things being cut. Once we get to that point, we come up and over. And those bones that we're cutting through are the bones that we're going to be removing out of the flesh later. And then we press down with our left hand on this other side, and we press down, we hold in that rib cage to the surface that we're cutting on. And we just slowly, gradually draw that knife right along. It's actually in the opposite way that we did on that first fillet. You see, as we draw through, we come right through the tail. Then we want to turn it around. And at this point, we come back, we cut back to that anal fin again, and we release the fish from this top piece. Now, after we cut right on back through, right to the tip of the tail, we then need to lay the fish down, turn it over. We want to open up like we were in that cavity before trying to take the row out and we want to score a light line and we want to break that membrane from this rib cage that's running in that direction. And all you want to do is just grab it. See how these bones are peeling out? They're coming right out of that section of meat. And it's very important that you got it close and you took your time because if you don't, you'll end up popping that meat off. We can come back and trim those. And you can see that keel bone, how it all grew down inside of this other part of the belly section. Okay, now after we remove that off, you saw how I pulled those bones through the, the rib cage away, then we want to come around and we want to cut and remove this keel bone. As you can see these bones that are sticking up here, they're actually, the other half of them is going back in this belly section. So the way to remove that is to very lightly apply a little pressure and just enough to touch those bones. You have to remember now, you take your index finger and you keep it on that guard so this knife becomes an extension of the nerves in your finger. You turn it over, and you score a line on the other side. and Try to, try to match it up on the one you did. You kind of get a feel for how deep you cut. You flip it back over and you grab it and you hold one side and you just pull it right on down. It just comes right on out over. See how it just kind of just, it looks like these little holes, they just kind of stick in it, just pulls right on through. And you basically removed all that bottom section. And that whole keel bone section stuck up in that part of the fish. You can take your hand and run it back and forth. If you left a little bone, maybe right here, like that one, I think that one broke off. Or oh, there might have been a little piece right there in the top that broke off, and that's it. Now you've got the fillet off the backbone, and at this time, we're ready to go and take the smaller bones out. Okay, now we're going to take and remove the small bones out of the first half that we took off. And believe me, once you've handled a knife a while, you'll find out that this is probably easier than taking it off the backbone because that is the most important part. If you don't get it and you don't get a lot of meat back, it'll be a lot harder for you. But we want to switch knives at this point. We now want to use a long, thin-bladed knife. Now, I know they sell a lot of long, thin-bladed knives on the market for fish cleaning knives, but the only time I'd ever use one of those knives would be when I was boning a shad. Okay, now what we want to do, if you notice, there's little spots that goes along this fish, and these are actually the outside set of bones that we're going to follow with my knife. And this is going to go down and out toward the top of the fish. And at the top of this fish, if you took your finger and you just kind of touched it, you'll find out there's just one circle here that's just like a knot. If you notice those little lines that kind of look through here, that's just a circle of knots that we're going to cut out. So what we want to do, like cutting along the dotted line, we want to take our knife, 
make a small incision about a half the inch down and then once we get that there's a lot done with this knife but there's also a lot done with my fingers it's kind of like when I show you how to press with your press down with the left hand and when you're cutting a fish you also want to take your thumb and your index fingers here now what you're going to do to separate this meat back from these bones is you're going to take your thumb and you're going to draw it down you want to just take it and apply pressure till you separated that meat. You actually want to press down and you'll be touching this flesh that you see in this point. You see these bones coming up? You've actually kind of pulled them away from this meat where they've been stuck. And what you, then you want to do, you want to cut around this knot. And as you cut around, I've got my index finger again on the blade. So this blade is like I'm telling you, is a nerve at the tip that I'm feeling all the way down to my index finger and I'm moving around it in a circular motion and as I come around it I come around it I'm touching it then I come back with my thumb and I just pop it out and that's just one knot of coarse bones we put that to one side and what I'm going to do is I want to cut on the other side of these bones take my knife turn my blade edge up get on the inside of those bones I want to make an incision about three quarters of an inch thick and all the way down come right on up and what I've done is I'm releasing those bones from the other side of the flesh take my finger and just run it back take this blade come down and you'll see there's another set of bones that run down in here these Y bones these Y bones it's kind of uh, pike and pickerel have bones that run down in this manner but they don't have this little membrane attached you come back and just work it loose then at this point you turn your knife again you get up underneath that membrane and you want to cut that loose just take it and just ride along I'm going real slow here for the camera once you become really efficient at this it really goes along pretty fast then you come back you just want to cut down a little bit with your knife lay it flat Take your fingers now, as I told you, and you just kind of help pull them away from the meat. Grab it like a pair of pliers again. You just take it, pinch it between the knife and your finger, and just come right on back. At this point, you want to take it into here. You cut the meat back right there, and they finish coming right on out. And that's just one strip of the three we're going to show you we're going to take out. Okay, now we're going to take the row out from the other side of the fish. There's another set of those little dots that follow right on along the line. So you watch my knife. I cut down right on the outside of those dots. Cut right back to the tail. Take that finger. Separate that meat. Take your knife. Press down. Take your thumb. Hear it. That flesh is pulling away. Now after you pull that away and you've come all the way to the tail, then you take your meat, you turn it around, and you have to take your knife, lay it down flat, and just rub it along the flesh in the top of the bones. That's how you release it at the top. You can't pull it with your finger or you'll break it. You come back, you do like you did before. You see how that meat curls back? All those little bones now are exposed but we have to cut them loose from the other side we come down take the knife make the incision right along the top use our fingers again to kind of help separate it if you notice at this point those bones are starting to curl away we come back we have those Y bones again we press back pull it back away and you've got that membrane that's holding those tips you want to come back again turn your knife edge up run right up underneath them pull those away at this point you cut it away it's a lot easier to cut it than try to pull it with your fingers once you've got that cut you start at the top again using those pliers that thumb and that nail and you just grab it and roll it right on back now you aren't going to roll it back every time and pull them all because it's so soft you got a couple that we left right here that broke off. But then we put it back together. 
Looks like we've hardly cut anything out of that fish. Now, you say, boy, that's a lot, but we got one more row to go. And this is really the quickest and the easiest and the last set of row. Okay, now we got the final row to take out. Now, like I told you, there's a lot of bones in this fish. We had over 300 bones in each half, and we were out to take the last one out. And this is the simplest one. You want to go from the bone and knife back to your wide blade knife again because you want some stability. You want to start on the high side, just cut straight down. You cut down till you kind of feel yourself touching the skin underneath. You go into it. After you've cut it loose, you come back on the other side. Cut almost down. Don't cut through the skin. Use that old thumb and that finger and make a pair of pliers. Pull it right on out. That's your final and last strip of over 300 bones removed out of that shad. And once we take it and we've done a good job, a little bit of practice, you put it back together and you can't even tell there's been any bones removed out of that half of that fillet. Fillet up here that we haven't taken the bones out of and you can hardly tell the difference in which half has been removed and which half isn't. Just a little skinnier because we removed the, the bones out of the fish. Now, what we want to do after we've done that you can just repeat the same process on the other side. You're just starting from the left instead of to the right. Now, when we're in the process of doing this recipe for you later, what we're going to do is this is going to be broken up in a frying pan, mixed with the stuffing, and we're going to take, and we're actually going to stuff this cavity on both sides and in the center with this set of row that we have here. And we're going to garnish it off with some strips of bacon and sit down and Eat it like a banana and enjoy it with every one of the bones that some people think can't be removed out of the shad. And that's what we have for this segment on how to bone a shad.